part two, what this works on is instead of playing notes on the beat with the hi-hat, we're playing notes on the upbeat or the offbeat or in between the beats. So instead of playing stuff like this, which was number one in the last section, number one in this section will be this. What I'm doing is I'm taking that bass drum and I'm putting it in between hi-hat notes. But the real key thing about this is this doesn't ever change. This is your point of reference. This is your timing mechanism. If this changes, you're messing everything up. Everything up. So this has to stay the same. So what a way to count this is because it's on the upbeat, um, it's easy to say one and two, three, four. So call, we call those ands sometimes. It looks like a plus sign on, on paper, but the way that we say it is A and D, like and. Like, I'm here in this room with Chad right now, even though he's being very patient and quiet over there right now, and just listening. Um, but uh, we're going to call that an and. So the first rhythm for number one, we're going to say in our head or out loud, one and two. Three, four, and if I kind of conducted it for you, it would be one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four. Um, and the way that I would play it would be like this: one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four. Stop. So I just played the first one for you. Um, as you go through these, the biggest problem that I see people running into, even though they just, maybe you could just play that with me now. Maybe you can play the first whole page of this stuff with me now. But inevitably, what seems to happen with most people is they'll want to move the hi-hat around. For example, and do things like this. So watch the hi-hat. It's being irregular right now. I'm changing the rhythm of my hi-hat. Well, what you need to focus on is that hi-hat has to stay the same. It has to only play those four regularly timed beats. If you're changing that in any way, you're making a mistake somewhere. And that's where having a personal instructor to kind of help you work through those mistakes or point those things out to you is a good thing. But uh, for our purposes, you know, the idea is I want you to be able to play this stuff at home, watch this video, learn as much as you can through a video, and then when you have a chance to get with a per uh, an instructor or somebody who can help you, uh, you're going to be further along, okay? So you don't have to wait just because someone's schedule's full, for example, or maybe your schedule doesn't you know, work with what's available with whoever you're taking lessons with. So anyway, that would be number one. Number two, we're playing on the and of two. So you're going to count that like one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. So if we play it, it sounds like this. One, two, and three. All right, number three, I'll actually count it off. It's going to be the and of three. We can play it together, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, and 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 three, four. Stop. Number four. One, two, three, four. So you're going to follow that same process with the snare drum. And then number nine, you have both the bass drum and the snare drum together. But number nine, the rhythm is one and two, three, four, which we've already done before. And actually, by the time you get to number nine, you'll do that. You'll have done that in number one and in number five when you do the snare drum. So that one and two rhythm is the same. But it is difficult to play the right foot and the left hand together using different sides of your brain, different sides of your body. Uh, it's hard to coordinate, but you know, work on it, you'll get it. Everybody does. Just gotta practice it. If you don't practice, you won't get better at it. So just practice it. Um, okay, number ten is rough for some people because you're playing one and two and three, four. It's continuous. There's a lot more going on, uh, but it's a pretty cool rhythm. Uh, you know, as you practice it more and more, it'll probably be one of your favorite ones in this section. But it goes like this: one.
my right hand stays the same. Right hand stays the same. And stop. Now as you go through this, it just moves the bass drum and the snare drum around. Um, and uh, you should be able to read all of that. Okay? So going on to the 16 bar exercise. You know, you have 24 of these exercises. After you can play all that stuff, you'll be in a really good position to do the 16 bar exercise. This 16 bar exercise takes the idea from this section and from part one section and combines it together. Um, I'll go ahead and play this through for you at a eh, moderate to maybe quick tempo so you can hear the phrasing on it and hear what it sounds like. And then we'll talk about some parts that people have trouble with. One, two, three. There you have it. Um, I guess to start off with, what we'll talk about is the fourth line, the first two measures. The first measure of the last line goes like this. One, two, and three, and four. What throws people off is you're playing off, off beats or up beats with the bass drum and the snare drum. And you know because we work through these exercises here on the other pages, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but people struggle with that nonetheless sometimes. Uh, but uh, the next measure, the second measure in that line, every single note you play is an offbeat. One, and two, and three, and four, and... That's rough for some people sometimes. It's just all offbeats. As long as you're counting, you'll be okay. And then from there in the third line, or third measure, you just get back to playing notes on the beat again. That's pretty easy, but the reason why I mention that is transitioning from the previous measure, from the second measure in that line to the third measure in that line, because you're going from offbeats to onbeat stuff, sometimes that transition's tough for people. So make sure you pay attention to that. Make sure your right hand isn't changing anything that is steady, as we've been talking about. Um, and then the last measure is sometimes tough for people because you're playing the left hand and the right foot, or rather the snare drum and the bass drum, on the and of one. You're also playing it on the and of four. Because they're together, that's tough, and because they're off beats, that makes it tougher. Work it out slow, just like we've talked about everything, you'll be fine. All right, um, other stuff in here, um, I would just say, you know, like in beat uh, third line, for example, you don't start on the beat. Most of these measures, you kind of start hitting a drum on the beat, but when you get to the third line, the first note you play on the bass drum or the snare drum happens to be an off beat. It's on the and of one, one and two on the bass drum, and sometimes that's hard for people. Everything else is about the same, it's not really that bad, just work on it, practice it slowly. Now here's what I recommend to do at this point when you're practicing. We've already been over section one, you've probably practiced it a bit by now. Hopefully you should, because I, I wouldn't suggest practicing harder stuff before you get the easy stuff down, or at least start working on it anyway. Um, so at this point in your practice, what I'd recommend is every day you sit down to practice, run through the first 16 bar exercise a couple times. Just run through it, literally just run through it. You don't need to really work on too many things unless there's something that you're not getting that you really want to get down. Practice that a bunch. But just run through it and then spend more of your time on section two here. Really work on that a bit. Now we're going to go to section three. If you're not ready to go on to section three, just pause the video, come back to it when you're ready.